In today's video, I'm going to be doing a Fenty Beauty Powder Foundation versus MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation. So it's going to be a two-day wear test. I'm going to be wearing this one just for one day since this is the first time I'm using this powder foundation. And then on the second day, it's going to be half of my face using this one and then half of my face using this one. I personally have not used this powder foundation as what it is. I usually use it to set my face, give me extra coverage. So this would be the first time that I use this as just a powder foundation. This is going to be a little bit of a lengthy video. So if you are interested in a particular part of this video, go ahead and check the description box. I'll go ahead and put the timestamps for you. And if you're new to my channel, what's up? My name is Ashley. I upload beauty, fashion, lifestyle videos Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 12 p.m. So if you're into that content, consider subscribing and let's get into today's video. This is the new Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. Now this retails for $36 and they are 50 shades. That is a huge range of shades. So that is amazing. You'll definitely be able to find one. Now if you have or had purchased their foundations, you'll be able to color match that way. So in their liquid one, which is the Matte Pro Filter, I'm in the shade 150. So I got the powdered version in the shade 150 as well. Now this you can purchase on Fenty Online or at Sephora. And if I'm being honest with you, I don't necessarily use powdered foundations on their own. I usually use them to set my makeup. So I'm a little bit interested to see how this is going to work out for me. I will say that it's like super, super, super important that you moisturize and you take care of that skincare to really get the best out of it. I'll definitely say that if you're in the dry area, I don't think that this would really be for you because it's just powder on top of the skin. I don't know if it will actually melt and all, but at the same time, I don't know because I'm not there yet. But I am definitely intrigued. I want to make sure that it covers everything I mean, you can see all my imperfection this is rawness at its finest so let's go ahead and zoom in and get all the details Fenty Beauty also came out with like a toner serum so this is what it looks like now I bought this it's called the fat water it literally feels like water what's cool about it is that it has this uh I don't think you can really see it because the camera's trying to pay attention to me but it has a little hole on top of the cap so basically you just twist it the cap opens and then you're able to squirt some out and then you just use your hands and you apply it all over your skin lately that is how I've been personally applying my toners just because I feel like my skin absorbs it better and it's just not you know the product is not landing on the cotton ball right now I used this a couple times for today I did use it but right now I'm still trying to finish my fresh rose deep hydrating toner I did not use it today but that's normally what I'm using right now but sometimes I'll like, you know, if I'm being a little extra, I'll go ahead and use this too. For primer, since I am saying that you really have to hydrate the skin, I did use the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched um, Face Base. This is super hydrating. I already have it on my face. We already got that situated. But then I also use the NYX Bear With Me Spray. This can be used to set your makeup as well as to prime. So I did a little bit of both because I said I am extra. Very quickly, I'm going to read to you all the details that it states, and I'm going to put it on the screen so you can read with me. So it says, it's a buildable light to full coverage for all, long wear, light as air, crease resistant. Give it to me quick. The award-winning foundation that forever changed the game. Now in a long wear, light as air powder to deliver light to full coverage in a non-cakey soft matte finish in 50 shades for all. It's fast, flawless, easy. Long wear, light as air, no flashback. Blur filter complexion to deliver the ultimate blurred finish. Sweat, humidity, and crease resistant. Buildable light to full coverage formula that loves to be layered. Won't settle into fine lines, clog pores, or cake up. Reduces the appearance of shine. Chic, portable powder, compact fits in hand. I will say that it sounds pretty amazing, right? Because sometimes, I mean, even though this kind of seems like easy to apply, sometimes putting foundation just takes me a thousand years for whatever reason. But it's clear it's claiming a lot first of all no flashback a two it's saying that you can build up so you can do really light coverage or really full coverage it's saying that it's going to be sweat proof and it just sounds amazing and especially because i have combination skin so even though right now i feel like my skin is a tad bit dry throughout the day i still get a lot of shine coming through it's just that my skin is like it's winter we gonna soak everything up but we're still gonna deliver it throughout the day so let's see if the claims are true. This does come with a sponge that they recommend you use to like really build up coverage. They say that you can also use either a looser, I think this would be too big, but you can probably use something like this if you want to just like set your makeup or if you're wanting just very light coverage. 
but if you're wanting a little bit more full coverage you can also use like a brush like this so I'm gonna use the sponge first and see how it works out I'm actually a little bit nervous but I mean it's kind of small very soft but I'm gonna go ahead and grab some and uh, this makes it hot because tengo uñas de caballota so here I have some powder I'm gonna start in my forehead so as you can see I had that um, I like to call it my sunburn area so let's see how well that layers I don't know how I'm gonna like this I hope it doesn't look all powdery and gross but I'm gonna do half of my face how about that half of my face so you guys can see the difference and how it's working so far right now when I'm looking at my forehead the areas where I have my pores I feel like I mean they're not coming through but I feel like they're not like being clumped. Like I can see them if that makes sense. I don't I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that in camera. But that's like half of my forehead right there. I don't know if I'm gonna get better coverage with the brush or not. It covers a little bit of my redness, but I still feel like I can see it come like still through. I'm going to go ahead and use the brush because I feel like it will be a little bit faster. This is the MAC 170 foundation brush. So I'm going to grab some of that. It's on the product. I mean, it's on the brush. And I'm just going to stipple that, press it into the skin. I usually do wear a, a primer that helps, like, minimize my pores. But I didn't do it this time because I wasn't sure how the primer and the foundation was going to look. You can see a little bit the pores that I had. I had to really press it into the skin to help it diffuse a little bit because they were kind of standing out. So I have half of my face done and I will tell you right away that I obviously you can see the difference. It did cover most of my uh, redness, I will say. Um, it did also kind of like covered some of the acne scars that I have. Like I look pretty even on this side of my face, I feel like. Um, I don't want to say that it feels drying. Like, I don't really feel like, like I have too much powder in my face, even though I feel like I really added a lot. Um, but I will say that, not sure if the camera will pick it up, but I feel like it's a tad bit cakey right in this area right here. And then I'm worried because I still need to put like my concealer, my bronzer and all that. So, um, let me do the rest of my face still using this brush and then we'll see. I went ahead and I finished my makeup and I have you guys a little bit close so you guys can really see what everything is looking like. And honestly, I feel like if you didn't know that I was trying on a powdered foundation, you wouldn't even be able to tell. Like, I feel like it looks like I'm just wearing a foundation. Um, to be honest with you, right now it looks okay. The studio lights do sometimes add a lot of like lighting and then it can look like I'm looking really oily. So I'm not exactly sure what... The lighting is picking up right now but if I'm looking at myself in the mirror it looks like I'm a little bit shiny right here but I don't know I'm gonna go outside and show you guys in daylight too what this looks like but um this is what we're working with you can definitely still see some of my um, imperfections right there but I feel like if we were to layer it like I think it might cover it but um I think I might zoom in I definitely see cakiness right here a little bit right here and then where I have this highlight right now the highlights kind of covering a little bit but it was definitely kind of caking up right in this area but once I applied the highlight it kind of like blended a little bit let me zoom you in a little bit more so you can maybe see what I'm talking about okay I have you like really zoomed in right now but I want to show you like the areas so this baby is still out and about I'm not mad at her I'm letting her shine while she's here but this area right here, I don't know if you guys can kind of see that it looks a little bit cakey, but I'm not like too mad about it. I mean, this is what the close-up looks like. So it is currently 1.28 p.m., basically, let's say almost 1.30. So I'm going to go ahead and start counting the time from now and on. I'm going to be wearing a mask because I have to go pick up my dog from the vet at 2.30, and then I'm going to be taking him on a walk if he feels all well. So um, 
we're going to see how this also wears in the sense of wearing a mask. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what this looks like right now with the um, natural lighting. And then I'll do my check-ins from now on. So this is what it looks like in natural lighting. So I'm going to see myself for the first time. Definitely the color match was actually really, really good. Really, really good. I think inside my room sometimes the lighting can be a little bit odd. It can look a little bit too orangey or so. But definitely the color match is good. Um... Like I had mentioned, definitely really cakey right here. Really cakey right there right now. But the rest actually looks not bad. Like, I cannot tell that I'm wearing a powder foundation. It looks like I'm wearing a regular foundation. So, I will be checking in with you in a few days. I mean, in a few hours. Okay, so it is currently 3.03 p.m. I'm going to take off this mask because I had to go into the store with the mask. And I just want to see how... The makeup looks after wearing a mask. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see, but what I've only had this for about two hours. Sorry if you can hear my dog. I just picked him up from the vet. So he's acting a little bit crazy. But um, it's only been like, what, two hours or so? Like two and a half or so since I've worn it. And I'm already looking <laughs> pretty oily. I don't know if y'all can see or not. Um, but for the mask stuff, it didn't look too bad. I mean, you can see the lines of the stuff, but... It doesn't look like to the point where I would be really upset or anything. But the only thing I'm upset about is I'm looking really oily <laughs> so far. So I'll keep you posted. Checking in because it is 4.35 p.m. and the sun is going to go down soon. So this is all natural lighting. I did take off my lipstick because I was eating and it's all gross. I just got back from walking my dog. So right now I'm going to go to the store because I actually need to get some marshmallows. Um, but is looking um oily right or am i tripping it looks a little oily to me so i will check in with you guys later on in my studio lighting so we're gonna keep it on but i'll probably block because i'm getting antsy i'm gonna go ahead and address the elephant in the room which is two things first of all what the hell what time is it it is 1202 a m so this foundation baby has been on for 12, 12 hours, I'm so tired, y'all can see. And not only that, but I've been through it today. I mean, my makeup was looking a mess, especially underneath my eyes. I had a breakdown. Your girl, this pandemic has been hard. But I want to tell you that I'm looking a really, really oily. <laughs> my forehead, you can literally get grease to make eggs, okay? Um, but I think it's because of my oils that the makeup doesn't look as cakey because of my natural oils but i feel like if i didn't have that it would look pretty pretty cakey um i actually don't have any other complaint right now um but this is what it looks like right now i will see you tomorrow for it can be fenty versus mac We'll see how that goes. Here's MAC Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation. Now this here retails for $33 and they have 53 shades. Now let me go ahead and read for you the description very quickly and I'll put it up here so you can read with me. A one-step powder and foundation that gives skin a smooth and even ultra matte finish with medium to full buildable coverage with a velvety texture that allows skin to breathe. MAC Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation is a long-wearing, color-true, non-caking, non-streaking, and non-settling, all for 12 hours. This pressed powder foundation is available in our most inclusive range of colors. Key claims and benefits, long wearing 12 hour immediately reduces appearance of pores, controls oil and shine, 8 hour non drying for all skin types, especially oily skin, stay true color, 12 hours, do not cause acne, non streaking, non caking, non settling, 12 hours, sweat and humidity resistant, photo friendly. The key points that I got of this foundation is that it's going to minimize my pores, it's going to control my shine, it's going to be long wearing, it's not going to cause acne and it's going to just be true to color. For this part of the video, I I'm going to be doing half of my face using the MAC Studio Fix and then the other half of my face using the Fenty. That way we can compare them. The shade that I have the MAC Studio Fix Plus Foundation is in C2. So in case that you don't know what that looks like, this is what it looks like. I personally have been using this for years and years and years, but I have never used it on its own as a powder foundation. I always use it as a topper. So I am using the MAC 170 brush to apply this powder foundation. Okay, that went on very nice and smooth. 
Also, it has to do, I think, with my um, base. I did apply the Bobbi Brown um, Enriched Primer. And then I went ahead and then I used a little bit of the e.l.f. Poreless Primer. Because that's typically what I use to, like, underneath my makeup. Okay, that's looking pretty good. But I do want to say that it, it's definitely looking a little cakey right here, though. And I don't feel like I've layered it too much, but let's see the end result. The coverage from the foundation, and I can tell you right now that it actually looks pretty good. Most of my redness is covered. I feel very neutral. I'm actually pretty pretty shocked of how easy that was. It didn't have to like get a bunch of product and go over and over again. So now let's go ahead and do the other side with the Fenty one. Now in the Fenty, I grabbed the color 150. And again, I'm going to use the same brush. That way it can be like the same application. I grab some of that product and then I'm putting it on my forehead to start with. And let's see. Oh my God, I'm just hoping that it blends like in the sense of the color because I'm going to look real crazy with half of my face like one shade and then the other half of my face with a different shade. I feel like for the most part they look pretty good like in the sense of color. So, so now that my face is full of foundation let me tell you that the color wise it looks good thank god but I do notice that I feel like this side of my face is looking way more which is the Fenty side. Um, at the same time, it could just be maybe like my own texture of skin, but I feel like it looks more smooth on this side of my face versus on this side of my face. I definitely feel like it looks a little bit more uh, cakey, which I'm surprised because I feel like when I first applied just the Fenty, I was a little bit like, oh, it looks really cakey. But I think a lot has to do with also how I applied my, my, my base, my like primer and stuff. So I'll talk about that in a bit, but let me go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup and then I'll show you the final look. Completely done with my makeup and I will say that I feel like it looks pretty good right now. I don't really feel like it looks cakey. It's not looking oily and it's not, I don't know, it's just, it's fine. I mean, it's trippy. Now that all my makeup is done, I feel like Am I really wearing like a powder foundation? Like I feel like I'm just wearing like a regular liquid one. But everything is nice into the skin. Nothing's like sticking out or so. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like outside. And we're going to go ahead and start our timer. Give me a moment to tell you what time it is right now. It is 1.14 p.m. And I'll be checking with you throughout the day. So this is currently what it looks like outside. And um, the color looks great. Like I was a little worried it's going to be like half of my face looking crazy. But um, it actually looks really good. I do have an eyelash right here, so ignore that for now. But um, yeah, I feel like it's looking good. So we'll see how it works throughout the day because I am going to have to wear a mask. So I'm going to pick up some food and then I'm going to walk Ronaldo and stuff. So we will see how it wears. It is currently 4.47 p.m. and the sun is going down. So this is what it's looking like. I did wear my mask once just to go pick up some food. And um, let's see. Right now I am looking very, very oily as you can clearly see my cheeks and my forehead. Um, not so much my chin. My nose looks okay. But I do feel that my natural oils are what is giving this look not to look cakey if that makes um any sense because right now i don't really see any cakiness around my face because i think my naturals are just like giving it you know feeding into it you can say but i'm probably gonna check in towards the end of the video i know i am looking crazy right now it is 9 23 p.m and i'm definitely wanting to call it a night because i need to finish editing this video for it to go up tomorrow and um I know that I'm looking really oily. I didn't end up blotting like I thought I was going to, but um, this is this is it. I'm looking extremely shiny. I'll go ahead and blot a little bit, but honestly, from the beginning, from when I first put this foundation on, let's talk about Fenty-wise. The first time that I applied it, I felt like it looked a tad bit... Not cakey, but in some of the areas where I was dry, I felt like it really insinuated it. So if you are somebody who has dry skin, I wouldn't recommend you to use a powder foundation. Um, you see, I, I blotted and I'm looking better. <laughs> and I feel like most of the time people do end up blotting throughout the day. I feel like when you first apply these powder foundations for both the Fenty and the MAC one, they look very... It can look a bit cakey. 
And then throughout the day, when your natural oils come, they mix very well with the formula and then make it look just very nice and like glided on, if that makes sense. I did notice that it does kind of insinuate the pores, so I don't really believe in the fact that they, because I think they both claim to minimize pores. I don't think that's a known fact. I have really big pores and I can see them. And I feel like when I normally do my foundation with a liquid, they... Not that they disappear, but I feel like I'm able to minimize them more than with this powdered foundation. The way that I did my base this time, because I definitely feel like I made a huge difference this time around, is that I applied the Bobbi Brown Hydrating, I don't have it in front of me, Hydrating Primer. Let that sit for a little bit. I applied a little bit of the e.l.f. Uh, no, this time I used the Tasha uh, Silk Canvas. I applied just a very little bit and I put it right on the cheek area where I really have those big pores coming through. Let that sit for a little bit and then I applied the Urban Decay All Nighter all over the face and then let that sit for about two, three or even more minutes. And that way I'm prepared for foundation. I feel like that's what made the makeup glide on very nicely. Like I was actually very shook. I feel like the MAC one, when you put it on, it glides on way better than the Fenty one. In my personal perspective, I was able to glide on the foundation more on the MAC one than with the Fenty. With the Fenty, I feel like it's a little bit lighter and you have to really build it up versus the MAC one, you get more coverage right away. Firstly, I'm not a fan of powder foundations. I tried it out twice and it just wasn't really my cup of tea. But I will say that when you put it on though, like when you guys saw the daylight, versions i was very shook and taken back with how well it looked and you couldn't tell like if you looked at me you couldn't tell that i was wearing a powdered foundation you would just thought that i'm wearing makeup like you wouldn't have thought is she wearing powder foundation or liquid foundation overall i think they're both really really good I can't really say that one is better than the other one because I feel like they were both to me very much alike. I will say that the MAC one glided on very much easier and faster when I first applied it. The Fenty one, I think you have to really build it up. But the Fenty one, I do feel like it looks a little bit more smoother than the MAC one. So again, this side was the MAC and then this side was the Fenty. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, comment down below. Let me know will you be purchasing the Fenty or the Mac or maybe neither. I'd love to interact with you. You're more than welcome to follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. I post your previews of what I'm filming and what I'm up to. So if you want to be friends, you can go ahead and follow me on there. I upload beauty, fashion, lifestyle videos Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 12 p.m. So if you're into that content, consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on my next video. Bye!